Welcome to Trans Theories, a show where we talk about everything Transformers. I'm Jason, and today, thanks to Toy Fair and Hasbro, we have new images of some Studio Line characters. So, there's four characters that you can actually buy right now, and those are the ones I'm going to be talking about. Those are Ratchet, Bombi, Stinger, and Crowbar. Now, I did a separate video on Bombi, so I'm not going to be covering him, but let's go start out with Crowbar. Now, we can see Crowbar's box, and it looks pretty cool. His box art looks all gray, which is not 100% accurate to his CGI model, but hey, it's cool anyway. We can see him in a box. It says Decepticon Crowbar Studio Series, and we see at the top the Karatomi and Generations. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if these are actually going to be in stores, because this guy is online right now, so I don't know if these guys are going to be only online exclusives. So let's go look at his uh, obligatory product shot, and he looks really cool. Like, yes, he is a straight remold of Berserker, but he still looks cool because he has to fit the character. If you look at the feet, the feet are 100% different. He has that, like, thing that's extending out, and his face looks really cool. I really dig that and I like how he has those dreads at the back I believe you could pose them like stick them out and move them around which are in other images I'll show you so they're not gonna all stick out like this because I don't believe that's a hundred percent movie accurate also his hands are still orange which I never really liked but hey I, we can all just paint that over with some paint he does have some red on the chest and his backpack is what we can see he has this bumper piece I'm gonna say or that's his hood that's sticking out yes it's not the most best place to put it but hey what are we gonna do here we see crowbar with a hand touching him poor crowbar they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. And what I want to point out is, with his tires, you can actually see his feet. So, that's pretty cool. So, we know the tires are actually under his feet. Now, looking at his vehicle mode and his robot mode, I'm going to say this. They're going to retool this mold into Dreadbot. It's most likely going to happen because they can retool how the backpack transforms and stuff, and Dreadbot only has the exact same model as Crowbar. And because how Crowbar's uh, vehicle mode is technically a box, same as the Volkswagen bus, they could easily make Dreadbot, and I'm going to be very excited if they do that. Here's another image of Crowbar, and we can see his dreads are more flared out, so I'm going to believe that these are going to be posable, because if you see on his top, the second one seems like it's going down, and these things, I believe, are going to be made out of soft plastic. Or maybe they have a wire inside to pose him. And this guy for poses is going to look amazing. Yes, I do not like the plastic they use. I wish it was black. But I guess I'll just spray paint that with some black or silver paint. And the last image of Crowbar that we're going to be taking a look at is him in his stand. Now, on his stand, we can see the freeway chase, which is where he jumped up and he crashed into the sign to let Hatchet and Crankcase go through. What they're doing here is amazing. I hope this studio line is going to last for at least a good three years or so until we get the next TF film, because if they get us all the characters we don't have collectors are going to be so happy and it's a win for Hasbro because they know that if they didn't make characters in the past people want to buy those characters that they didn't get so I'm going to be almost 100% positive that they're going to be keeping this line for a long time next let's move on to Stinger so here we see Stinger in his robot mode and he looks really freaking cool I do want to point out is if you see on his chest and that clear piece I think that's actually his windshield now even though he doesn't look 100% like he did in the movie I don't care because the way he looks he just looks amazing to me and I really did his look because of those engineering techniques like how they have the tires in his uh chest i like that even regardless it's not 100 percent accurate i just like how they actually put the engineering and that's what i really like with these figures we can see his feet and those are the feet that he had that are like bones. we can see this uh tire piece over there um his visor looks pretty cool i just wish the face had a little bit more paint because it is kind of dull but painters could really easily fix that up now we see these things on his back and i don't know if you remember those are like his spikes or something i'm not 100 sure now we can only see three but but he actually does come a four like he has in the movie. We just can't see the fourth one. Well, we can just a little bit, but not a lot of people can see that. Also, what I do want to point out, which I don't really understand about Stinger, is one arm has a lot of kibble while the other one doesn't. Well, I don't actually really mind. I'm just going to use this as like how he had his gun or something. I'm just going to pretend, you know, use my imagination. Now let's go move on to his box. And his box looks pretty cool. We can see that he is a bit mistransformed to fit in the box, which is fine. We can see his box art, which looks pretty cool. I believe back in the day where Age of Extinction came out, we had textbooks and they had Stinger on them. And I believe this is the exact same picture they used for them because I actually had a Stinger notebook, which is pretty cool. It says Transformers Age of Extinction right here, Studio Series. And the only thing that I kind of wish he did have, if you've seen his CGI model, he has that like that thing where his gas tank is or what that's what I would like to call it. He doesn't have it on the toy, but hey, you know, they could not make everything 100%. They tried their best and I'm gonna honor them for that. I also do want to say in this box that there's like a big hole between the chest and where his head is, but that is there. So that is gonna tick off a lot of people 
little button. Here's an easy fix. And this may seem dumb. I would just for me actually put a red Lego brick in there just to fill up the cavity or get some red paper or something that's red. Put it in there to fill up that cavity. Now let's go look at him in an in hand image and we can see that he is really freaking cool. I really like how they actually posed his uh, kibble on one arm. So I know you remember but this reminds me a lot of a Chevy Trax. How they had those spike weapons. Now I do not know if this was intentional to be like that. Even though Stinger did not have that, I'm going to use it as that weapon because he was a KSI thing. And I also do need to give a shout out to Decepticon Barricade uh, for telling me um, that there was going to be a new Nitro Zeus coming out with an accurate head and a few new molding. So that's really good. Shout out goes to you, man. Also, I do want to point out, I think the legs were actually reused from the Age of Extinction Bumblebee. And he did get a repaint that looked more like Stinger, but we all know it was horrible. Now let's go into his vehicle mode. And I do have one mick pick before I say all the good things is he has a Decepticon logo. Technically, he does not have it in the movie, but he is controlled by Megatron, so that may tick off a few movie accurate fans, but to me, it doesn't really 100% mess with me because I could just paint over that and it'll be fine, but I'm actually going to keep it because this is going to be worth a lot of money in the future. Now, his car looks spot on to what he was in the movie. I do not know what the car name is, so it's going to be appearing on screen right now, and his grill looks amazing. I just really like the grills of these supercars and those lights. This thing looks really freaking cool. I like how he has the white and black stripes, and I wish they also showed a back shot of these cars, but sadly, we don't have them. And here we see Stinger in his backdrop, and it looks really cool. And I do want to point out that he does have his spike weapons up there, and they do look pretty cool. I like how they have all four. His movie accurate. Only thing I do not like is how they have two of those red parts sticking out. I wish they were all black, but hey. He can't have everything. Now, let's go move on to Ratchet. Now here with Ratchet, we can see his robot mode. And the thing I'm gonna point out right now is, if you see his back, that thing is sticking out and that does not look good at all. The Dark of the Moon one did a much better job hiding the backpack. And this is, if you don't know, just a remold of the Dark of the Moon one. The only thing they really added is those lights up there. They'd be more accurate. It does seem like that he has that buzzsaw. And what I do wanna point out, in the original Dark of the Moon, this piece that I'm pointing out right now would fold down, but it doesn't seem like it does here. And he also has some paint work from his Autobot logo, but I would have to say guys if you'd want to get this version of ratchet in this colors get the movie the best one because it's more accurate and it uses a dark of the moon mold which is more slim and it's more accurate in my opinion it doesn't have as much kibble as this last thing i want to point out with this is his feet have no kibble on them which did change because the dark of the moon one did have kibble for the feet but even though they did try to make him a bit more movie accurate it did hurt him in the long run just because of that big backpack now let's go move on to what he looks like in the box now in the box it looks pretty cool and what i do want to point out is in this box you can see two parts that are taking off. Those are his light bar, and I think those are another piece. Now, what this could mean is you could actually take parts off of Ratchet and display him better. Like what some people did with The Last Night Barricade. It took off that big backpack to display him in their collection to be more slim. For me, I don't like that idea. I hate that idea because you're taking parts of a Transformer, and to me, it feels more like a parts former, even though those could still stay on. But this Ratchet, nonetheless, it does look good. Now, let's go move on to his art. And in his art, he has the Mission City background and i believe that is mission city because it's not revenge of the fallen and this thing looks really cool i really like how they have the planes up there and i wonder if one of them is starscream i highly doubt it but hey it would be cool we can see ratchet in his vehicle mode and it looks spot on but i'm gonna still say that the dark of the moon mold was better than this mold and in the last image that we're gonna be looking at ratchet i'm sorry this one's a bit out of order it's just how they put the pictures on place on this website we can see more of that backpack draping down which is not movie accurate at all but he does have really cool blue painted eyes and he has a big smile now let's go move on to Optimus Prime. And now why these images are a bit different is because these are not released yet. These are just product images. And I believe these are going to be actually official release two weeks from now. Don't quote me on that. I just believe I'm just going to predict it's going to be like that. Now let's go talk about this Optimus Prime. It has its strengths and it has really big weaknesses. Let's go start with the strengths. The strengths is he has those really cool Energon swords. And I hope you can take those off, which you most likely will. And I'm going to actually give those to my other Optimus Prime because if I do get this one, I'm not just playing it with this one and here's why some nitpicks with this guy look at the chest the chest by itself to me it doesn't look good we have to be honest it does not look good at all all the other optimus primes even the revenge of the fallen ones the faux chest even look better than this oh damn Ow! And look at his backpack that he has, that big blue uh, top of the truck. That looks horrendous. Now, I do not want to bash the figure too much because, you know, it is Hasbro. And I should give him respect. But for this figure, to me, it just doesn't look good. Let's go move on to his truck mode. And in his truck mode, it looks pretty good. I gotta say, it did really good for the truck mode. Yes, it is missing a few of the flame details because there should be orange like there is in the original truck. But none of the Optimus Primes really have that detail. I also want to point out that the smokestacks are a bit small. Also, at the back of the truck, I believe those are his feet. So that's not going to look 
too terribly good. And with the window, it has all those like cuts in it, which I would prefer just a whole smooth piece, but what would you do? And here's Optimus Prime in his toy CGI render. Now let's go move on to Starscream. Now I originally covered him in my Studio Line Thoughts video and that hit 11K, so thank you guys. And I think I'm actually gonna change my mind because I said I was not gonna pick this guy up, but I think I'm actually am gonna do it now just by looking at this image, it looks really good. A few nitpicks are that he has blue hands. I don't 100% like that, but besides those blue hands, everything else hits the ball on point for me. We can also see his missile launcher, and in this image, we do not see his spinning blade like we saw in the other one, but I believe he does come with a spinning blade. Here is his vehicle mode, and this one, it looks so realistic. That's why I want to get this one, because how cool it is, it is a redone version of the Dark of the Moon mold, so I may get this if it does scale exactly the same size with the original Seekers that came out in Dark of the Moon, because for me, I do not like Starscream's tattoos, and I like him being all original. Yes, there's a movie, The Best Starscream, but I honestly do not like that one. And here is Starscream's render for his toy. Now, let's go move on to Leader Class Grimlock. And now when I saw this thing, it looks so good. And I actually checked my original uh, Leader Class Grimlock, and this is 100% a new mold. Just look at the paintwork on this thing. It looks so accurate to the film and all those molding details. I gotta say, some of the studio line hits the ball, some of them don't. So this is a hit in this series in my opinion, but seeing this, this is a big fat hit. He also has that spike ball that he had in Age of Extinction. And his head, I like how he has that really big horn. And I also want to point out in this picture that you see those two pieces coming down. I do not believe those are 100% movie accurate, but even if they're not, I'm going to use them as like a cape for Grimlock because I always imagined Grimlock having like a big cape. And here's his dinosaur mode and my god just my god looking at this thing it's amazing what hasbro and takara could do when they put their minds to it i wish all the studio line series figures looked like this but the reason why i don't think they look like this is because grimlock was a legendary warrior and he had all that detail but if you look at somebody like starscream or crowbar they did not have all that legendary detail so maybe they're gonna say leader class uh legendary detail <laughs> i would like that because you know he's a legendary knight i believe his mouth would move so he could eat cards like he did in the last night and he here is Grimlock's CGI model for his toy. Now let's go move on to Leader Class Blackout. Now this Blackout figure looks so good. Yes, the image is a bit cropped how the guy took it, but hey, what are we gonna do? I do want to point out in his robot mode that he does actually have transparent uh, glass, which looks so cool and accurate to the movie. His legs look really accurate, so I wonder how those transform. I wonder if they're gonna actually be faux legs, but I'm not 100% sure, but they could actually transform. Here's another image of him all in robot mode. And what's really cool about him is we originally saw him with that extra blade piece but we do not see it here so maybe you can actually take it off and store it you can also see his backpack piece which looks so cool and it's way better than the original one we can also see scorponok and he looks pretty cool i believe he does have an articulated tail i wish he did have more motion but hey what are we gonna do and in this image we can see blackout in his helicopter mode Next on this list, let's go take a look at Jazz. Now this Jazz figure looks amazing. Yes, the toes on him should be a bit longer, but hey, we needed a good Jazz figure that's been locked for a long time, and Hasbro finally gave it to us. Now, I do want to point out that this looks like a smaller version of the Human Alliance Jazz, just because of the similarities. And I'm also going to show another image that was actually in hand at 2018 Toy Fair. And we can see in this image that he actually has silver, which is so cool. So we do not have to paint him, because originally his old toy had gray, and now he has silver and this guy looks so cool. Next, let's go move on to Lockdown. Now for me, what I found, there's actually two versions or two images of Lockdown. I'm gonna show the one that is a prototype and I'm gonna actually show the one that was at Toy Fair. So the prototype one looks ugly. It's all brown, it just looks nasty. Let's just say somebody <laughs> dumped the figure in the toilet, flushed it with all that nasty stuff, and it came out looking like this. Yes, the molding on this looks pretty cool, but the coloring, just a big fat no. We can also see the brown lockdown in his vehicle form, and it looks pretty cool. Way better than the original one, because it actually has windows this time. Now, the one at Toy Fair 2018 looks so amazing. Look at the head scope on him. It looks so good and so accurate to the film. He has those spike pieces. Yes, he does look like he has a lot of back cable, but hey, for the lockdown figure that we always wanted and needed, this is the one you gotta pick up once it comes out. He has this hook that he came with, and also, according to the uh, prototype, it seems like he has like that knife piece that he tried to kill Cade with. So he comes with both of those accessories. Yes, he does not have his gun face, which I think a lot of people would want, but maybe we can actually take the original lockdown's gun face and put it on this one. Or they may give us a whole new one that we haven't seen. And I also want to point out this lockdown. A lot of people are going to be happy that he actually does not have 
have a Decepticon logo. He also has those scratches in place for it too. And here's Lockdown CGI image for a toy box. Now, let's go move on to the Varenja the Fallen Megatron. Now this Megatron is actually silver and it looks so good. Like I said, I was not gonna get this, but this changed my mind completely. Looking at this image, he looks so cool. Just look at the feet. They're so accurate to what he had in the movie. His whole body is just perfect. Like, oh my God. I love how he has those red beady eyes. They pop with the silver and the copper. And I also like that he actually has movie accurate hands for once. Now let's go take a look at his tank mode. Now in his tank mode, he looks again, spot on, all silver. Look at those detail in his treads. I believe those are like chains that they have in motorcycles. And those things look so cool. It's all 100% accurate to what he looked like in the film. His tank blaster is just amazing. I really like how this figure turned out. So I'm most likely gonna put this guy on my buy list. And here's what it looks like to be a CGI image for the box. Now, let's go move on to Brawl. Now, I believe this Brawl is actually a Voyager class figure. And one thing I do have to point out before I move on is that his tank muzzle is pointing down. And, um, yeah, I, re I really do not like that. I know what you guys are thinking in the comments. Now, let's go move on to the bright side of this image. We can see his feet are 100% movie accurate. His head looks really cool. His hands look pretty cool with all those guns. I do have to point out one nitpick that he has that extra piece there. Hey, let's just say his extra armor. I also do like how he has those uh, mind brushers in front of him. I do not think they should be in that position. I think they should be a little bit more bent like he had in the CGI model, but hey, it's still a toy. What are you gonna do? I like how he has those missile launchers and I believe you can get your tiny jazz. That's a good launch. And you can make him climb up on Voyager Ball and go wa-boom and make it fall off. Lastly, let's go take a look at Brawl's vehicle mode. Now Brawl's vehicle mode, it has his very strong points and it's weak. Let's go talk about the strong points first. The first strong point is that his vehicle mode is accurate to the movie with the color screen. The thing I really do not like is how they put all of his kibble on the top, like his claw and his huge gun. He did not have that when he was a vehicle, so I don't honestly like that, but this brawl is a Voyager, but we still need it for a long time. So I'm going to respect Hasbro, and maybe they'll let us take it off, and we can display it separately. Well, I hope you enjoyed this piece of news. If you have any other Transformers news you want me to cover, give a comment down below, and I'll do a review on that as soon as possible. This has been Trans Theories, signing off. What do you call within the grim of the evil